guys good afternoon good afternoon uh it's so great to be here again with you guys how are you doing how was your week uh mine was good 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 uh very busy but very good okay um okay so interestingly um our guest happens to be here uh welcome uh Tunde success um Okay, so today we'll be talking about something um, really critical, critical because of where we are right now, you know, across the globe, the situation of the world right now. Of course, um, uh, no one is oblivious of the fact that the world is going through crisis, um, uncalculated, unmonumental crisis right now, you know. Um, COVID-19 is affecting every damn industry, you know, in a very catastrophic and disruptive way um unprepared organizations companies startups are being affected a lot of people are having to pivot to their businesses people are losing their jobs all right so in the light of that we uh will be talking a whole lot about how to navigate these critical um changes and this time right so um today we are, we are having someone um, who is very profound um, and of course who happens to be one of the people um, navigating these times like this you know in one of the largest organizations in Africa all right um, I'll be bringing him shortly very 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 shortly um, but before then I want to say welcome again to the show um, this is the Isaac show where we actually speak to disruptors innovators you know and those who are changing the status quo across different industries all right so um tune success is here let's bring him in and then we will kiss kick start from right <laughs> okay so um welcome in kiroka welcome okay um tune success is live Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So I think that your, I think your screen. Yes. Hello. Just a moment. Um. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. I think it's, it's very good now. So I think that you Okay. Okay. Okay, great. 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 All right. Once again, welcome to the show. Uh we start today's success. We should definitely <laughs> It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure to have you on. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, I'm so excited because um, I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, talking to you on the show today. Um, uh, not just because of who you are, <laughs> but because of um, um, the relationship you have with sectoral segments in various industries such as banking, HR consulting, non-governmental and sector, non-governmental organizations and telecommunications. He is an alumnus of the IMB Switzerland and also a C consultant at Stanford University US where he provides uh, which provides the opportunity to work remotely with successful companies in West Africa as part of his contribution to Stanford University 
to improve economic prosperity for African businesses. He is a certified talent economist who based in South Africa. A highly sought after consultator and speaker uh, in conferences and trainings across uh, Nigeria. Today, he is passionate about people and the power to leverage human um, he has created several initiatives and platforms to develop coach emerging professionals. Secondary school. Yeah, when you were in secondary school, of course, it's part of the story. It's part of the story. Yeah. Part of the story. Yeah. So, yeah. tell us about uh, why did you have to teach? Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All that. I mean, you are senior manager with MCN now today. Mm -hmm. and, um, you had to go through all that very rough part. Tell us about it. Is that experience? Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for the invitation and thanks to our audience for joining. Um, I, I think that my story, my story is an interesting okay. story. Um, Absolutely. It's, 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 um, <laughs> it's one of the best kept secrets, you know. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll start with where it started from. I lost my dad when I was 10. My dad used to work in the bank. Um, my mom was interesting. A, was a trader, um, but she was largely funded by my dad. And after my dad died, things became very tough. Um, tough to the point wow. that I had to see myself through secondary school. I had to pay my school fees myself. Uh, I remember in, mm. in, in my secondary school, I was a senior prefect of the school, but I hadn't paid for my work. And they had to, wow. you know, in the staff room, the teachers had to contribute money so that the head boy would not miss work. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, wow. I think at some point I even wanted to. I applied to work as an as an houseboy somewhere in Ogudu, and uh, wow. I passed the interview. But for some reason, I didn't go back. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but during during that period, of course, I had come to an awareness of who I who who, who, who I was. Um, I was self aware, you know, and um, in my GSS, I think my GSS two or just as three um i i started um a club in school um in my ss1 or thereabouts i started acting for key division 101 um so i was earning some money uh, from the federal government um by the time i okay. was in ss2 as i was an ss2 um i was the president of all the 
uh, student clubs in my in my secondary school because they elected me as their president. Um, okay. And of course, by the time I left school, I was focused on my academics. Of course, you know, I was focused on extracurricular activities, but I also focused on my academics. Um, by the time I finished school, whilst waiting for my work result to be out, um, I started teaching. I would teach in the morning, then in the evening. I'll teach in the morning. I'll teach in the evening. Um, and just to keep body and soul together. And of course, wow. after, after a while, I got a job at an NGO, um, Action Health Incorporated. And I would go to work in the morning with the NGO. And then in the yeah. evening, I started my own tutorial center, trying to prepare a student for YEC. Um, and it was fun. It was very adventurous. It was fun. Whilst I was working with Action Health Incorporated as a youth staff, which basically meant that I was facilitating um, training programs for young people, you know, at the time. Yeah. Uh, my boss, uh, Mrs. Nike Essiet, had two boys. And because she was traveling a lot, uh, she needed someone to mentor a kid. So she took okay. me out of the office. And then I started working in our home with our two boys. Okay. Uh, so we had okay. a timetable that would teach them things around values. I mean, some of the things that we were teaching uh, students, at the NGO, so I'll teach them, I'll take them out, I'll mentor them. Of course, my salary was increased, and whilst I was in all of that, I gained admission to study mathematics at the University of Ibadan. Awesome, 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 <laughs> awesome, awesome! Wow, I've I've never even heard it this deep before. <laughs> but I think um, <laughs> I think we met while I was still um, we met while I was still in school. And I was mm. working um, as editorial assistant for Genesis Magazine, if I can remember. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Remember, right? Good, good. Um, and I think um, um, one of your, I think your first book or one of your, one of your books. Then I, I had the privilege to go through the manuscripts that you sent to me. And I think um, I'm not sure if that was when I got to uh, know about this particular story of yours. Um, uh, but I was very intrigued. I was in. Tired, I was challenged, you know, uh, that's okay. Um, um, people like us aren't alone, you know, and that um, irrespective of, um, of the circumstances, right, that um, <laughs> nothing is actually capable of stopping us from dreaming and actually doing the dream. So, yeah, um, interesting, interesting. So you, you lost your dad at, at age six, you said, right? Ten, ten, ten. Ten, ten. That's, that's wow. 30 years ago. So, 30 I, I, years ago. 30 years ago. So are you the only child? No, no, no. I have... Uh, oh, you're the only the child? Second... No, no, I'm not the only child. We are four. I'm the first okay. guy, but the second born. So I have siblings. Awesome. Awesome. So, so how did your other siblings make it through school? Did you also have to... Well, I mean, we... we sponsor see, them. We are, we, we, no, we all had to... During that period... We, we all had to navigate in our ways. We all had to navigate. Mm. Um, um, it was a difficult time, difficult path, but we had to all find our way, you know. Mm. Mm. Okay, so awesome. So you got uh, um, admission into, to study mathematics at the University of um, Ibadan. Um, yeah. um, of course, we have to continue the story from there. Um, but I know the other part that I also know about the story was... Um, of course, before you joined MTN, I know you worked for a couple of um, organizations. One of one of which was um, um, Intercontinental Bank, if you can yes. remember. Yes. Of course. Yes. Uh, so, um, so tell us about. <laughs> I can't forget those days. So tell us about um, being in school. How did you? I mean, how did you sponsor yourself through school? And tell us about. Um, and of course, how did the intercontinental job happen? How did you navigate your way through school, getting your first job? You know, yeah, basically. Fantastic. So, um, I remember when I was in, I was in SS two. I just, um, we well, just collected my result, and I was the best student in the school. So wow. I wrote a letter okay. to my uncle. My uncle who at the time was a professor at the University of Ibadan, I wrote to him uh, that I wanted him to buy me um, a bicycle as a gift for being the uh, first student in 
my class. And the man replied and said, you know, congratulated me and said that um, um, it wasn't yet time, you know, that he had other plans in mind. You know, this was in, mm. this was in GSS 2. Now, um, by the okay. time I finished, by, by the time I finished my secondary school, one of the reasons why I was in court hustling was because um, I had to take care of myself. I had to sponsor myself. Absolutely. By the time my results was out, my uncle, yeah. at least my uncle, uh, offered to take responsibility for my university education. That was his wow. bicycle. That was the bicycle, you know, that, mm. that uh, he gave to me. In you know, place so of the I, bicycle I, gifts. In the place of the bicycle, you know. So I stayed with him in a bad dorm. Um, you know, he paid, he paid my school fees, you know. So I didn't have to worry wow. about money. You know, when I was in university, um, but of course, when I was in the university, I kept on building capacity. I had an NGO um, because I worked with an NGO. I had an NGO. I had staff in Lagos, in the Badon. Um, you know, so I was, in, I was in all of that. You know, I tried my hands on a couple of things whilst I was in school. But more importantly, um, by the time I finished um, university, um, whilst I was waiting for NYC. Um, I wrote my first book. Um, mm. When I wrote my first book, uh, <laughs> very interesting, I wrote my first book. And before I finished NYC, I wrote my second book. I think three months before, three months after. So by the time I finished NYC, I had published two books. Now, when I wrote my first awesome. book, um, Daniel Etokana, who used to be, uh, who used to work with Feladro Toye, we had met somewhere in, in, in the... Um, Adwekiti. It was seven in Adwekiti. Okay. So we met in Adwekiti whilst I was there on a church assignment and we got talking. Okay. Um, and then I, I sent him a copy. I sent Feladro to a copy of the manuscript to read so that he could write the forward, but he couldn't. Yeah. So when I finally published the book, I published the book with, when I was going for NYC, my uncle gave me transportation um, uh, money. Part of the transportation money, I deposited it in the bad dorm. Uh, um, to publish the book. So when I got to NYC, okay. um, the guys that were doing a job, you know, collection, you know. I okay, think we yeah, did yeah. Collection. Trip, so yeah, the first yeah. month was my turn. Um, when I collected the first collection, I sent it back to Badon. That was how I was able to publish the first book. So when I finished publishing mm. the first book, I sent a copy of that book to Daniel, um, to Fela through Daniel, my fiance through Daniel, time, yeah. Yes, helped me to deliver a copy of the book, you know, to Faladro Toye. And when they read the book, he was impressed. And then he said to me, I've been trying to write a book for a long time. I've not been able to. Um, I'll, I'll need you to help me, you know, write my books. So by the time wow. I finished NYC, um, I, I came to Lagos. I remember I went to, I went to his place. And when I got to his place, um, I left that day with a job right wow Through really first book, you know yeah so that's why i got a job with <laughs> you know to help him um, interesting you know, uh, to help him with his books with his books vision okay um you know yeah. so i was responsible for um um a bit of research on the books um dealing with the logistics you know looking uh -huh. for the appropriate cover um uh -huh. we'll wake up in the middle of the night when he's available and then we'll go through his ideas together, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the books that came out from my uh, experience working with him was, uh, or is what is called uh, The 17 Laws of Academic Excellence. Oh, you know? oh. Uh, yeah, 17 Laws of Academic Excellence. Very popular so when book. I did all probably, that, probably his most yes, popular book. His most popular book, yeah. You know? So when I finished with that assignment, after three months, I felt that... Um, now, when I was in school, I had two ideas in mind of what I wanted to do with my life. The first one was either to work in a consulting firm and do HR. The second one was to yeah. work with an NGO, right? Because mm. as a youth staff with Action Health Incorporated, I've been exposed to um, the NGO environment. And yeah. what I was doing with the NGO largely was facilitating training programs. You know, so I thought that they were okay. related. So when I... When I uh, had my stint with Fela uh, for three months, um, I felt that this wasn't quite, you know, what I wanted. Maybe I should try something else. I should try the second option, which was working with an NGO. Um, yeah. And then I applied to Leap Africa. 
Now, when I was seven, I heard about Leap Africa when I was seven in Kaduna. Um, they were doing a program in Abuja called Integrity Institute. I had applied, um, I'd attended, you know, you know, the program. So when I, uh -huh. when I left Fela, I applied to Leap Africa. Leap Africa was looking for a coordinator. Um, and then that was how I got the job with Leap Africa. So this was an opportunity for me to try NGO. So I've tried consulting. Now there's an opportunity for me to try NGO. So um, I started working with Leap Africa. I was there for eight months. It was one of the best moments of my life because I then got the opportunity to facilitate training. I got the opportunity to travel yeah. all over Nigeria. Um, you know, and awesome. I, was having fun. I was having fun. And after that, when I did that for eight months, after that, my pastor needed my attention. Did... Okay. Yeah. Um, so I left to volunteer for church, um, you know, for about three months. Um, so I left my church, I left my work to volunteer for church for three months. And uh, yeah. after three months, um, one of our church members was working with Intercontinental Bank. They were recruiting, sent my CV, I applied, and that was how I got into <laughs> the bank. Wow, wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, but you, you wanted to do, I mean, of, of course, Bob, while you were in school, I mean, throughout these experiences you had with Fela, of course, you were able to decipher exactly what you wanted to do, you know, and um, HR was top on your mind, right? So, why, yeah. why, why, why would you say you opted for um, the job at Intercontinental? Was it because, um, um, of course, it was readily available? I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is somebody looking for a good i mean i mean, I mean a, some good means you know to make a living you know so of course it was the first most attractive opportunity mm. available for you and you had to take it right mm. as opposed mm. to delving into hr so how was your experience i mean at intercontinental well i mean it was interesting because um you know so when i left when i left uh, felado to a, after three months I remember leaving yeah. PGC and I was crying as I walked, you know, from Fela's house to the gates. I was crying. Mm. A few minutes ago, I had a job. Now I don't have a job, right? Re uh, considering where I was coming from, you know, um, mm. how I had, to, I had to struggle through secondary school and all the like. So um, I wasn't, logically speaking, I wasn't in a place to be rejecting a job. I was in a place to be leaving a job, right? It didn't, it didn't make, make sense. sense. For you to do that, sense, yeah. You know, yeah, but I felt that it, it was it was it was time. Um, the right thing, okay. Leave, when I was going to leave Leap Africa, it wasn't quite easy, but you know, you know, but I did. Now, when I got into Leap Africa, I haven't done consulting for with Fela for three months, and I haven't done yeah. Leap Africa for eight months. Um, doing training, doing training, I just automatically assumed that. In intercontinental bank i was going to be in hr i was going to be in training okay. right I that see. you know it was a it was a graduate training program so they were going to post you you know and that's i was okay. going to be in hr now I that see. was my, that was my intention that was my thoughts until after six months at the training school i was posted despite the fact that i had made my desire known no. i was posted to a branch, a branch operation. Wow. <laughs> at Osho D. Oh my. I, I, wasn't <laughs> to, I wasn't even posted to Ikeja. I wasn't Ikeja, posted right? to Ikeja. I was posted to Osho D. Right? Wow. I mean, I thought, wow. oh my God, what is this? You know? Now, the reason why, when I was in, when I was in school and during NYC, I didn't go for, I didn't apply to any, any bank. I didn't go, you know, for any of those banks opening because mm -hmm. I, I said to myself that I would never work in a bank. And the reason why I said I'd never work in a bank was because I felt, why would I finish school and they're going to be counting money? That didn't make sense, <laughs> right? So what, yeah. what I said I would never do was where you, I was posted to, right? You found yourself so, doing, yeah, yeah. I mean, I found myself counting money. I was a teller at Osho the branch, you know, <laughs> all of those agios, you know. But the first day, the first day I stepped into the into the branch, they all the knew branch. that they all knew that I wanted HR because I told them. I told them I'm just here for a few minutes, uh, for a few for uh, months. 
what I want, what I'm interested in is HR. So they started calling me HR, HR, right? So I, I worked, I worked there, and um, and um, so what will happen is that when HR sends any communication, any HR-related communication, I'll be the first person to see it. That's why the fact that mm. I was tell her. I'll be the one telling people, mm. ah, HR, HR has sent an email, have you seen it? Mm. Looking at me, what's wrong with this guy? So one day, HR in Intercontinental Bank wanted to launch a mentoring program. So they asked okay. people for ideas. The moment I saw okay. the email, I started putting together my thoughts, you know, on how the program can become successful. So mm. I sent I sent it to, to HR and I told the guys in the branch, have you seen the mail on mentor? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. You know, I mean, the awesome. guys were just wondering what's wrong with you because in the branch itself, you have enough enough things to keep you occupied. You know, this is ocean. Let alone mentoring. Yeah. So, yeah. But in the midst of a lot of those business, I was still finding expression. I was still doing HR, you know. So um, I started writing to HR started telling them that I was interested in HR, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is what I've done before, you know, and all the likes. And after six months, after confirmation, um, after my six months confirmation, I just got a letter saying that there was an opening at the mainland branch, you know, at, yeah, at the HR, at the mainland um, headquarter, HR headquarter of the bank. So that was how I was posted from wow. somebody back to... Uh, at the so, time, it's the headquarters in mainland. Yes, mainland. Wow. Place. So, as an HR officer, mm. when I when I got there, now remember that I had written at this time I written two books. Two when books. I got there and I studied mathematics fresh from school. Now, in my story, whilst I was doing tutorial in after secondary school and in UI, I had come up with alternative formulas for solving mathematical problems. You know, that's mm. how much. I had gone into the academics. So here was I, wow. I haven't studied mathematics in school, I haven't written two, bo two books. When I got to HR, there were a lot of memos that needed to be written. And the guys on ground weren't comfortable with writing. So they dumped all of those things at my desk. So I started writing memos, started writing memos, and um, to the point where my boss didn't need to correct anything in my memo. You know, and wow. when people wanted to, when people wanted to, if, if, if another team, if you need to write a memo on another team, they will ask me to come and look at it before they send Help them. <laughs> you know? And that was how I started shining. You know, there were some wow. calculations that needed, some benefit calculation that needed to be done. Uh, once you clock one year in the bank, and it was a struggle for a lot of people. Well, because I studied mathematics, I got on it, you know, and people started um, 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 referencing my work. Um, you know, so that was how I started shining in the bank. So the point that, so one of the things I was responsible for in the bank was um, celebration. So if a, if a staff is doing birthday, I will send out birthday emails. If a staff yeah. has a baby... If a, staff, yeah. if a staff has a baby, I will do the communication to the whole branch, yeah. you know, to the yeah. whole region, not the branch, to the whole region. Now, Interesting. If, if, if five staffs are doing birthdays, I'll send five different emails, five different celebration yeah. emails. Unique emails. If, yeah. Unique emails. If 10 um, staff have babies, I will do the announcement of the babies with 10 unique emails. So the point that mm. when when a staff has a wife that is pregnant, the staff will tell me ahead of time that my wife is pregnant and I'm waiting for my email. <laughs> you know, that was how, how popular Interesting. I became. You were, you, you know, became, wow. Became. And then, you know, I mean, I, 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 I used to dress very well. You know, I took care of everything. Um, and then I got promoted very quickly in the bank, you know. And then before MTN started calling. <laughs> Awesome. Wow. This is, this is amazing. This is, this is mind blowing. Very, very interesting. Okay. So, so you worked in, um, uh, at Intercontinental Bank for how many, how many years, um, all together? About two years. About two years. About two years. About two years. Wow. And then, uh, I could pick, in fact, I could immediately pick a lot of, uh, not just from your story, you know, you wanted to be in HR and then you, Actually, literally reshaped and um, organize your own posting into HR by the things that you did, by the value that you added, you know, by the difference that you made, you know, 
are in contributing when others were looking to contribute to the HR department, you know, in starting yourself out as opposed to joining the crowd, you know, and giving superior value, you know, like, you know, crafting emails, and of course, solving mathematical problems and all of that. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, so you worked at Intercontinental for, for, for two years, and then yeah. afterwards, I think it was afterwards that you moved to MTN, right? The MTN. So yes. how <laughs> exactly did MTN happen? How did you clinch well, and you it, land the job? You know, or was it a referral or was it an interview? And how did you hasten it? What, what really happened? I mean, uh, MTN was, was quite interesting because remember that at bank, I was a star. You know, people loved me and all the likes. And um, I think I just got tired, and then I started putting out words that I needed a new um, experience. So I spoke to one of my senior colleagues at the time, um, Jimmy, you know, that I was looking for another job. And then he asked me to send my CV. I sent my CV to him. He sent my CV to someone in MTN, right? One of um, his colleagues at the time, who happened to be working at MTN. Did you work at MTN the then? Senior manager. He said, Did Jimmy tell okay. No, no, he... No, Jimmy had a friend who was a senior okay, manager. In there. All right, at MTN. All right. Okay. okay. So I sent my CV and there was an opening. Um, so they invited me for tests. And when I got to the test, um, usually they will give you like um, example, like a sample test, maybe 10 questions to, to run, to, to, to attempt, right? Just to give you an idea of how the main test would look like. I did yeah. the, the initial test and I got everything. You know, I think I was the only one who got everything amongst all the candidates that came for that uh, test. By the time the main test Amazing. came, I didn't pass enough to move to the interview stage. So I couldn't Whoa. get in. And then another opportunity showed up. Another job came up. Uh, MTN wanted to uh, start a new function looking at the southwest part of the business they wanted an hr person to focus on the southwest part of the business so it was new so i was called for interview okay. and they, well i came for a test i did the test i passed the test you know uh, this time around i passed the test and then i went for the interview and that was how i got in wow when was this this was um <laughs> this was 22 uh, 2009 2009. 2009. So, so I, wow. Yeah, so I, I joined MTN the last day in, 20, in 2009. So that's 31st of December 2009, right? 31st of December 2000, 2009 was when I joined MTN. Wow. And you joined, you joined as what? What position were you employed for? I joined as an officer. I mean, you can call it entry, mm. level, but um, you needed mm. to have about four years' work experience, you know, um, mm. you know. But it was lower level. It was the entry point. The lowest yeah. level. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So in um in um in about eleven years, you've you've risen to I mean pretty much the one of the highest or I mean top level positions in the company. You know um how were you able to navigate your way this fast? I mean, well, low I level mean, and entry uh, level, and now you're a senior manager. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so if you understand MTN structure, um, you will know that I've been quite lucky. I've been quite blessed. I've been quite fortunate. Um, because mm -hmm. when I joined MTN, there were a lot of us who joined the same day. Um, and all of us are not on the same level. It, um, because MTN operates a flat structure. So you can be on one level for 10 years. You can be on one level for 15 wow. years. Right? Yeah, because MTN will not promote you. You have to do um, when there are opportunities, you have to compete for every level. You know, you have to compete mm. for every level. So it's not, I have made the level, does it? No. You know, you have to compete for every level. And, and the truth is there are people who have been on one level for a long time. But the thing is that you'll be well taken care of. That's, that's the thing. Regardless of your level, every year you get increase in your salary and, and so on and so forth. So, um, but one of the things that has helped me is um, when I was going to become a manager, which is the next level, you know, um, after spending three years, um, I joined 2009. I became a manager in 2012. So every three, three years, mm. I've made the next level, right? Except, okay. except this, this current level, you know, but every, every other level, after three years, I make the next level. 
Um, and okay. what, I, what had happened is when I was going to become a manager, my manager left. I, I, was, okay. I, was, sitting, I was sitting at Ojota, right? Um, but I used to do a lot of traveling to the Southwest because that's my, the focus of my, of my um, jurisdiction. Of your units. Oh, jury, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my manager was sitting at VI. They were, okay. there were say, four of us. Somebody in the north, somebody in the south, then somebody in the south-south. I was in the southwest. And then somebody in the head office. But all of us were at the same level. So my manager right. left. When my manager left, our job was advertised. And um, the, my colleague who was working with her at the head office got the job. Right? Mm. So when my colleague got the job, I reasoned that one of, the, one, of, one, of, one of the factors that made it easy for him to get the job was because he was working closely with our boss. The rest of us were far away from our boss. Mm. So what I did was that I then asked to be transferred from Ojota to the head office. Now, okay. my house then was at Bagada. So it was very easy for me to commute from Bagada to Ojota. I was Ojota. in Ojota. Nobody, nobody knew what I was doing. I could close at any time. Yeah. I could do anything, you know, and so on and so forth. But I thought to myself, if I want to grow, I can't, be, I can't grow staying far away. I have to move to the island, even though it was, in quotes, inconvenient, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for my career, I needed to make the sacrifice. I needed to be where it was happening. You need to be yeah. where it's happening, okay? Yeah. So I moved to the island. I started working with our new boss, right? I started, under, I started understanding some of the things that I didn't understand whilst I was working you know, at the region, you know. And um, so what happened was that some of the things that my boss, you know, my boss then left a lot of things in my care. My boss would, would I was doing everything. I was doing everything on, on my boss's behalf. You know, I would mm. attend meetings on my boss's behalf, you know. I would even mm. create work and drag my boss into it. But I was doing everything. And into I the work. Because, yeah, but I was doing the work, you know. It and was challenging. That, that, that helped me to grow. You know, it helped me to understand mm. the business. It helped me to grow because I was doing everything. Of course, with the permission of my, of my boss, I, I would show him yeah. this is what I yeah. want to do. He would sanction it. Yeah. I would run with it and so on and so forth. You know, so mm. when my boss, <clears throat> this, my new boss then left, there was an opportunity. You know, and wow. I was able to compete for the job, and then I got the job, right? Wow. Um, so that was how I became. That was how I became a manager. You know, because I had to make the sacrifice to leave my comfort zone and move to the island mm. where things were happening, so that I could learn. You know, and be able mm. to, so I could see things from a strategic point of view, not just from an operational point of view. Okay. Um, so I became a manager. Um, you know, I became a manager. It was quite early, but, you know, I became a manager. And after I became a manager in 2012, the division that I was supporting was going through a transformation project in 2013. Mm -hmm. and I would sit in management meeting and they'll be asking questions, um, HR-related questions about the change, about the transformation, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't have answers. And I'll go and meet my bosses, mm. you know, I'll ask them questions and I won't get convincing response. So what I did was mm. I then went to Italy to get certified as a change manager. What we're trying to do was the change management project, but I wasn't getting con um, uh, convincing uh, support or convincing response of how yeah. we were meant to respond, you know, to the yeah. change. So yeah. I went to learn. I went to learn, I got certified. By the time I came back, the knowledge and the insight from that training, I deployed it to manage the change, the change. And the change was so successful. I mean, it took us about one, one, year, one year plus, you know. Uh, by the time I was done with that change, you know, um, and it was 2015 already, you know, uh, it was 2015 already. And I went to Harvard in, I went to Harvard in June, 
for a six day uh, training program on performance management. But before then, I had gotten some certification mm -hmm. in performance management. And then by the time I yeah. came back, uh, shortly before I left for Harvard, there was an opportunity, a senior management opportunity in performance management. And I was going to Harvard to learn more about performance management. And of course, by the time I came back, attended the interview, you know, that was how I got the job in 2015. Wow, 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 awesome, awesome. As, as manager, right? As a senior manager. As a senior manager, amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. So do, do you think your, your having to go to Harvard also contributed to your being considered? Of course, or, I mean, of, course mm. of course, of course. Of course. So it was a strategic decision it, to I mean, go to it, it, turned, it, it turned out to be strategic because, I mean, I didn't know. So what had happened was that I had, I had worked as a generalist, as an HR generalist for a long time from Intercontinental yeah. Bank, even becoming a manager. So I said to myself, yeah. when I'm done with my career, when I'm done with what I'm currently doing, what else would I like to do? So I spoke to mentors, yeah. I spoke to coaches, and I narrowed down to performance management because performance management is complex, it's technical, right? So I said, if I want to start my own business, where would I like to focus on? I chose performance Perform management. Now, this yeah. was when I was still a business partner. This was when I was still a generalist. And so yeah. I said, if I want to do performance, what kind of investment do I need to make now? So mm -hmm. I started, I started to qualify going for, for that position to qualify for performance management. The training yeah. at Harvard was on performance management. You know, so by the time I had done all of this, and there was no position, there was no performance, there was no vacancy in performance in, yeah. in my yeah. organization. You know, but yeah. by the time the opportunity showed up, I already had all the things that I needed. I already had all the skills that I needed, the knowledge that I need, you know, to be able to do the job. You know, so it's, mm. you know, when you say that success is when opportunity meets preparation, preparation. You, know, you need to prepare before opportunities show up. You know, I, I didn't, mm. I didn't, I took, I took a leap of faith when I was investing in performance management without a performance management position. It was mm -hmm. a blind faith, right? It was the step of faith, you know, but I was building capability because I knew that. I would like to, that's an area that I would like to, um, I'd like to delve into, you know, yeah. eventually. To disrupt. Awesome. 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 Awesome story. Okay. So now, um, um, the, I mean, basically the story of your life is nothing short of, um, <laughs> of, um, challenging and inspiring at the same time. Um, right now I, I actually want us to, to now delve into, um, um, the minds of, of course, of um, the audience, especially, you know, with this COVID nineteen came a lot of disruption across different sectors. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's pretty much um, something that a lot of people did, never expected. You know, people have lost their jobs. People have, have had to do. I mean, had to take a pay cut. You know, um, um, companies are pivoting. A lot is happening, basically, right? Uh, what, but one of the major things um, that is, um, you know, that is, um, that I've seen to be a worry for many people is having to lose jobs, you know, without a cost, you know, without them being, um, without it being the fact that, okay, maybe they were inefficient or whatever, and all of that. Yeah, so, um, with the mind, what would you say, what, what, what would you say, to start with, what would you say organizations can do at such a time as this, especially those being affected negatively by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, whose operations, products, and services are almost being rendered obsolete? What do you think is the right thing to do at such a time as this? Wow. Um, thanks for that question. Uh, let, me, let me start by looking at it. For, okay, I'll, I'll come back to how it affects individuals. Let, let's start with the organization. Um, I, I think that a lot of organizations are very lazy, right? Um, some organizations are very lazy. Some, some people are just using COVID as an excuse, right? Um, and that's mm. my personal view. Um, yeah, some businesses mm. are affected by COVID. Some are just using COVID as, a, as an excuse. Um, if your business is affected by COVID, you need to assess the impact of COVID on your business, 
mid-term, short-term, mid-term, and long-term, right? You need to do scenario yeah. planning. If this situation continues like this for six months, um, how does it affect our business? You know, um, how yeah. does it affect our cash flow? How does it continue, right? The situation continues for, for, for one year. How does it affect our business? How does it affect our cash flow, right? Um, what are the, in terms of our, in terms of what analysis, in terms of what we are capable of doing, our, our capability, right, as an organization, where else can we deploy our capability, right, as an organization? Mm -hmm. um, for example, mm -hmm. you run a restaurant business, you run a restaurant business, people are not permitted to um, fiscally even well people are not permitted to have sit down um at restaurants um okay i think you open this week right but for a long time people were not permitted to go and have a sit down at a restaurant yeah yeah um, but absolutely people could come people could come and buy from you um the question yeah. is um how, how what about switching your business what about switching uh, switching your business model cognitive channel yeah you know, which is, can you do home delivery for people, um, you know, and so on. As can you go online? I mean, one of my favorite restaurants in Lagos is Farm City. And, and <laughs> now we order, we order, we order Farm, Farm City fish, you know, from home, right? And they deliver, you know, they deliver, Absolutely. you know, in the midst of, of COVID, all right? So let me backtrack. I, I think yeah. that a lot of the, I wasn't, I wasn't the, the thing about COVID is that COVID just re, re, reinforced the importance of digitalization of your business, right? That's what COVID Absolutely. has done. COVID just yeah. COVID forced the change on us, right? But for many years, yeah. I knew that the way to go is digital. For many years, for for about years or so, so um, I started running an online. HR courses online, strictly online, right? Strictly mm. online. Um, I started running my training programs, you know, online. That was about three or four years ago, okay? Because wow. I knew that the future was digital. I have read, I have read about it, you know, that the future of, of, um, of, of business is digital, right? Yes, I've, yes. I've read about yeah. it in business school and so on and so forth. So what's, what am I waiting for? I'm not going to wait for somebody to... Uh, I'm not going to wait for a disaster to happen before I go online, right? So all my yeah, interests, yeah. I move them online because I have read that this will happen. A lot of businesses yeah. are not paying attention, right? To the mm. fact that every mm. business is now a digital business, yeah. right? And the story that yeah. comes to mind is the story of Domino Pizza. Domino Pizza does not see itself as a food business. It sees itself as a digital company selling pizza mm. you know so mm. when you read things like that you'll be prepared as a business so a lot of businesses were not prepared because we take a lot of things mm. for granted right um yeah yeah but now that it has happened now that it has happened what you need to do is every business needs to invest in digital every business needs to invest in digital right awesome. because that's really that's really the that's it, it no longer the future that is our reality you know, so you need to start yeah. investing in, in, in digital channels. And then, of course, you need to do a lot yeah. of communication with your staff. You need to do a lot of communication yeah. with your Your employees need to understand what is going on. But that ties to my first uh, 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 response about assessing the impact of COVID on your business. Because until you are mm -hmm. able to impact, until you are able to assess the impact, what do you communicate to your staff? How do you communicate in a way that makes sense? Right? How do you mm. tell them that guys Absolutely. we will not need ten of you because um, our business cannot survive for the first six months? But if things continue like this, it or, or we will need you guys for six months. We will need you for one year, right? So in, in in six months, we I need you guys to to know that in six months we can undo six months. But after six months, if things continue, we will not be able to continue. So that employees can yeah. also plan at their own level. Right, so right. Know that, yeah. Look, I've got six months to, to keep my money. I've got six months to save my yeah. money. Right, I've got six months to look for uh, alternative. All right, and if things improve after six months, if things improve after six months, you know, then life continues. 
you know so you need, you need to you need to do a scientific assessment of your business um you need to invest in digital channel you need to communicate communicate with your staff mm. you know, communicate with your staff you cannot mm. emphasize communicate with your staff and if you need to you need to make the tough decision so if if people have to go right they have to go but make sure you do it with a heart you know mm. Mm. Mm, make sure you do it with your heart. Amazing, amazing. Okay, um, now I want us to, of course, we've spoken about you've spoken about the business side. I want us to talk about the individual part now, uh, um, the, the, right. uh, as it affects um, people, as yeah. it affects employees, you know, as it affects staff. Uh, I'll make it as practical as possible, right? What would you say to someone Sorry, who I, has I done? Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? In. Oh, wow. Can you hear me? Okay, better now. Okay, great. So, what would you say to this person who has lost um, her job, okay, who does not have a uh, plan B, who's looking, for, who's looking for how to get a replacement or another job, so to speak, amidst this COVID-19? What can that person do differently? How can that person clinch a good job, a decent job, um, as, as it, you know, at such a time as this? All right. Um, let me let me and I'll t I'll tell you a secret, right? One of the things that I've done in my career, or one of the promises that I made to myself in my career, is that I will never be in a place where um, I will not be needed. I will never be in a place where I will need a job. Right? Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah. I'll never be in a place where if my employer tells me to go home, my world would crash. I'll never be in that yeah. place. Yeah. So that is also one of the reasons why I started investing in my ability to create value. Yeah. Awesome. Right? That's the reason why I started paying for one of the international training programs that I paid for was with Cornell University. I think the program had either six or eight mo modules, and each module would cost about either 60000 then or so, or 80000 mm. That was a lot mm. of money, but I was yeah. paying instrumentally. I was paying mm. instrumentally because I wanted to develop capacity. I wanted to develop my employability. Yeah. Between, in seven years, I would have spent more than 40 million naira in seven years investing in myself. My wow. own personal money. Right? Wow. You know why? Because I, I would not want to be in a place where I'm asked to go home. Then I'll start crying. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm unable to create value for myself. Mm. Right? Mm. So... Mm. That is one mistake that a lot of people make. I started spending mm. millions of naira going for training when I didn't have a land at Magburu. Wow. Wow. Right? Because I know that you can get broke to a point where you don't have a choice but to sell your land. But if you invest in your ability to create value, right? that returns will keep coming. Human Absolutely. capital is the only capital that appreciates. So Absolutely. I started investing in myself. Wow. All right, started investing in myself. So, <laughs> I mean, so that's by the way. So if, if you have not done that, if you've spent all your money doing a show B, spend all your money um, in a, another venture, that's fine. The question is, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. It's now. Yeah. Right? It's now. So yeah. you yeah. need to build, you need to build capa capacity. Mm -hmm. Right? You need to build yeah. capacity. You don't have, you, I mean, they've lost, you've lost your job, right? What do you do? You've lost your job. You need to, you need to sit yeah. down and recalibrate. Ask yourself, you know, questions. Um, it's an opportunity to reflect. It's an opportunity to re-examine your life. Is your life going mm. in the direction that you wanted it to go? 
some of us are mm. doing the job we don't like because we have bills to pay, but we are not happy making the money, right? Mm. So now you've lost the job. You need to sit and ask yourself, is this really what I want to do with my life? If I do another 10 years, will I be fulfilled, right? Mm. So it's an opportunity to, say, to, to course correct, okay? We and assess don't yourself. Be afraid yeah. to start, don't be afraid to start afresh. Don't be afraid to go back to school if you need to go back to school right don't mm. be afraid to go and learn if you need to go and learn right so one is examine your life ask yourself um is this is is this line this career is this my line if it's not my line what am i passionate about what do i really want to do right and then yeah. start a new course for your life okay number two yeah. is number two is also ask yourself what am I able to do? What, 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 what skills do I have? Do a, a skill assessment of yourself. What mm. am I good at? What am I good at? Mm. Um, what is it that I can do with my eyes closed? What is it that, you know, I can do for free, even though people can pay for it, right? And then, um, and then ask yourself, where, where can I deploy my skills? Which opportunities, which platform can I de deploy my skills? I start looking for volunteering, right? Volunteering mm. opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was when awesome. I was with um, Leap, when I was with Leap Africa, and I knew that I was going to leave um, on a church assignment. You know what I did? Mm -hmm. I found I I I started sending emails to some of my stakeholders, right? Some of my stakeholders. And asking them if I could volunteer for them. Mm. So when I, I sent that before I left, before I left the organization, and one yeah. of them responded and said, "Why not?" So even though I was volunteering for church, I was also working as a volunteer for a training uh, consulting firm at Allen. They were paying my transport fare, right? But what that was that. Mm. Um, I wasn't sitting down at home. I was learning. Um, mm. They were paying my, my. They were paying for my transport fare. Um, I was learning. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to contribute. Mm -hmm. I was coordinating mm -hmm. their training training department on a volunteering basis. Okay, so look for opportunities to volunteer, right? Look for opportunities mm -hmm. to volunteer. Okay, um, and then, so we've talked about do an assessment of yourself whether you need a redirection. Number one. Number two, do an assessment of your skills, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and your passion. Number three, mm -hmm. if you need to uh, learn something new, this is an opportunity to learn. If you need to go to school, this is an mm -hmm. opportunity to go to school. Number four, Amazing. look for opportunities to volunteer, right? Yeah. Um, number five, put words out there that you are available. Mm. Right. Put what out there that you are available. Sometimes mm. people are not able to help us because they don't know that we are available. Mm. Right. So put what yeah. out there that you are available. Yeah, available. Right. Number awesome. five. There are consulting firms that there are consulting firms that do recruitment solely recruitment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Philips Consulting. Um, which other ones now? Look for them, right? Look for somebody that works mm -hmm. with those organizations. Connect with mm -hmm. them. Send them your CV, mm -hmm. right? Send them your CV and let them know that mm -hmm. you are available. Number seven, there are individuals who are always posting job opportunities like myself, right? Yeah, follow Connect. them. Follow yeah. them, right? Because they will post something. You know, the interesting thing is that when people ask me, people ask me for referrals all the time. And between you and I, I, I can't remember who is looking for a job. Because how many people am I going to remember who is looking for a job, right? So that's the reason why I post those jobs online. Mm. So it's only right? those who so are following you that will actually see them. That will actually mm. see them. Okay, that will actually awesome. see them. You know? so, so do all of those things, you know, and then finally, mm. you know, just trust in God. You know, trust in God. Awesome, awesome. We have 20, we have 20 seconds to go. 
So okay. I'll just say thank you very, very much for coming on, on the show today. Uh, it's been an incredibly profound session with you. Thank you so much. And thanks to the thanks to everyone for joining. Um, I hope you were able to pick one or two things. Um, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.